<laughs> All right. So we are on to change the world. As, oh, here at this point. So, um, as you know, sometimes we don't realize, but um, when we when we uh, when we learn, we're actually changing the world. Yes, us little mosquito human beings, um, we are so powerful. Especially here, that is the group, the women's group, <coughs> and the women are gonna save us from, you know. Uh, from all the men, <laughs> the women, the women are going to save us from uh, this uh, craziness of this world, right? Bishut nashim tzitkaniot, like we say, and therefore, um, I'm, uh, the, the fact that you're all here with me gives me hope for um, surviving the end of days, because without you guys, um, there's you know, there's no hope. I gave up, I gave up on the men long time ago, so. <laughs> um, but but um, but yeah. Today it's the women who wants to learn. It's the women who wants Moshe. It's the women who wants to grow and to connect to God. And um, when I invite men to learn, there's only the women coming. So <laughs> that's it. There's no. The, the, that, that's that's uh, you know. It shows at the end who is. Who is the real powerful one? After all, the woman is called Gvura, right? The man is super chesed, the woman Gvura, so she's the she has the strength. And um, you know, if if uh, it's it's the woman who give babies because men will chicken out and never have children if they were the one giving babies. So at the at the end, we know it's uh, all thanks to Chava. Um, plus, plus, let let's let's be honest, it's Chava who pushed Adam to eat the fruit because Adam was not doing anything. He was not eating from the fruits of the garden that God told him to eat. And he was not eating from the Etzadash. And there's nothing worse. You know, it's like a guy, like he's on a date already a few months. And, and he, uh, should I marry her? Should I not marry her? Should I commit? Should I not commit? And they cannot make a decision. So that was a little bit Adam. On, on, on his decision, decision Gan Eden, and he couldn't commit. And Chava says, enough with that, eat. I know you want to eat. So enough with, with uh, being undecisive and get, get, some, um, get some guts, you know, get some, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, so, 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 so the woman is the one who is pushing the men to actually make decisions. As we know, the woman is the neck and she, they turn men's face in the direction that they actually need to look, which is only at his wife, nobody else. So that's what we should um, aspire to, to learn from the strength of the woman and to make choices and um, healthy choices. Okay, enough of the introduction. Let's start with the misconceptions that Jews have about Judaism. I think it was, well, we're almost done. We did already... 55 of them, uh, which, is, which is powerful. So, uh, and, and it shows you how confused the Jews are. That's 55 oh, misconceptions okay. that Jews have about Judaism. Okay, I'm speaking about from Jews mostly. So now we're going to uh, continue number 56. So m m number 56 actually very important uh, is that the misconception that um, God chose us to be the chosen people. Yes, you heard me well. God actually didn't choose us to be the Jewish people, or at least not in the sense that it's understood. First of all, even before thinking of a choice, it is uh, understood that God, you know, decided that we're going to be the Jewish people. And... and and that this is how it was going to be, and that we had no choice in it. And he took Har Sinai and what that famous midrash, and he took the the, the he, he took the Mount Sinai and put it upside down above our heads. But and therefore we were forced to accept the Torah. Well, if that was true, then why did Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, right, um, ask the Jewish people if they want to follow the Torah? Right? Why why did he propose to them? And they said, 
oh, you know what? Yeah, Nasev and Ishma, we, we actually want to do it. So if, if you ask them, the, or you're forced or, or you have a choice. So the truth is that we are not the chosen nation. We are, we chose God. We are the nation who chose God to chose the relationship. We only became the chosen nation because we chose to have a relationship with God. And therefore the whole thing of the Jewish people, uh, it's, it's because, so why is it that way? Why is it that way? Because it's a relationship, right? God wants us to have a relationship with him. God didn't want to have a forced marriage. You know who, who are forced to be married to God? The angels. The angels are forced to be married to God. They have no choice. They, they see God in his glory and God made them that they should praise him uh, all day long. You know, so, but God doesn't want that. What's the point of me paying some uh, individuals to, you know, to play music for me and telling me oh, I'm so awesome. Uh, you're paying them. So it's how real is that? Um, God doesn't want to force marriage. He wants a relationship where the kala, the woman, us, humanity, um, chooses him. He wanted, and that's the whole point that we have free choice. The whole point of free choice is that the woman chooses the man, not that the man forces or the parents forces the woman to marry that guy. God say, I want a relationship that is as authentic than a husband and wife. I want a relationship where you choose who your husband is is your husband is going to be me or your husband is going to be uh you know uh avodazara basically like the earth or yourself you want to marry yourself or you want to or, or for some people they will say jesus or whoever whatever religion god said you want to marry me this is my marriage contract my marriage contract is the torah it's, it's the Ktuba, and I want, to, um, I want to marry you. So at Mount Sinai, the Jews, and not just the Jews, you have to understand, God had sent prophets, says the Midrash, to all the nations of the world, to all 70 nations, so that anybody who wanted to become God's wife, so to speak, God's partner in taking care of the children of, of, of the world, of humanity, um, will be able to join the Jewish people and become God's wife, um, God's partner in, in uh, elevating the world and bringing everybody back home. So, um, so really the way I like to, to put it is, it's not, we're not a chosen nation, but God is the chosen God, right? Uh, a very, very uh, different perspective on, on how we look at it. So the misconception, just to, to, to finish that thought, the misconception is that we were forced to be Jewish. The misconception is that we were um, forced to do the commandments. It's a relationship, it's a marriage. So we have to look at our, at our Judaism as a marriage, not as a forced bunch of laws. Imagine if I tell you, yeah, so, you know, you're going to marry that woman or you're going to marry that man. And this is all the laws. You have 613 laws to make uh, that man happy. And this is, this is what you have to do. And you have no choice in it. That, that's, that's not a marriage. That's a uh, that's forced uh, relationship or like I like to call it raped Judaism. When you force down the throat of people, um, especially children, uh, to be religious um without without any you know room to understand the relationship without any room to understand uh you know the commandments and what god wants and the the whole big picture and uh, that we have to choose it and so i like to tell uh, always people that we need to especially the religious jews that even though you were born in a religious family you have to decide to uh, choose God again. You have to imagine that I came in this life and what would I do if I was not Jewish? I will choose to convert again. If I'm not able to say, uh, if I was not Jewish, I will not, you know, I will convert again to be God's spouse or to be God's partner, then 
or your soul is not Jewish, or you completely had, you never experienced what real Judaism is, and you never, therefore were never able to uh, make the right choice. But we, we it's, it's a choice. It's like a marriage. You, can, you have to look at your Judaism as a choice and not as a forced thing, because God doesn't want that. Otherwise, we would have forced it since the beginning. We would have forced Adam, you're going to be Jewish, and you, you wouldn't have wait 26 um, generations. Okay. For, for, nope. for. Uh, oh, yes, to be Jewish. Yes, uh, uh, Dodi? You have a question? I have a question, yes. No. Uh, in times of... of um the uh, Esther and the Megillah Esther. Yes. I remember at the end, it, it says that um, many people convert to Judaism because they were afraid of, of us because of what, what the power that Hashem is was with us. So those souls who converted to Judaism, um, they still having this, this, what, what are you saying that uh, you don't have to be forced even though they are afraid and 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 converting it's I, it's complicated my question but i just wonder Meaning if they had converted out of fear not out of for the real the right reason to choose voluntarily um out of their own free choice to choose god without pressure Yes, it, 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 you, I don't know if it, do you remember in the Megillah Esther? It I don't remember that, that they converted. They, yes, it said that many people after after we beat them, <laughs> ah. many after we beat them, many people converted because they were so. The, the, I read it in the translation Maybe. afraid, but I don't know if it, in the original it's is the same translation. Uh -huh. Okay, I don't, um, that's a good question. I mean, I don't remember that it says actually that they converted. Maybe it's possible that they said they, they started becoming religious or, but maybe you're right. I don't, re I, I don't remember it's in the Megillah itself. I remember it, it might be in the, in, in the Gemara or in the Midrash. Is it, it's, an, it's at the end of the Megillah, at the end of the end. It finished in that way. Ah, okay, let me check quickly. But um, let's see if I have it here. Um, where is it? Okay, I don't have it right here. I'll I'll double check. I'll double check and I'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's just it's just a question. Is that what happened with those souls who convert to Judaism? So I, I believe I believe first of all that people who convert out of fear or people who convert like uh, like the Egyptians, a lot of Egyptians converted for right the Erevrav. so these they are the ones who I end up who actually end up really wanted to be part of it and those who just come out of fear it's not a real conversion and um those can be souls that are jewish and then end up leaving judaism at some point right because you know that's um because I, everything everybody is going to be confronted with his authenticity eventually with his soul who he really is and who he really want to be so i assume that that's that they're going to be confronted with that at some point in that li lifetime or in the future yes um right so okay so that's the great question thank you so that's that's the that's the the idea that we we have to look at ourselves as um choosing god and that's why we're the chosen nation not the opposite because God could have chosen anyone. Can I, sure. can I ask just about when you say they went to all the nations and, and the Jewish people chose God? Like, I don't know what the Jewish nation really was before being the Jewish nation, but right. why did they, like, what, what made them like, take it like that versus every other nation in the world? Yes. So very good question. Yeah. And, and are say, the other nations really like less than like a lot of, I've heard people say that when Mashiach come, like that, the, that the guy in are, are like the non-Jews will be your servants or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so like, I've heard yeah. of <laughs> it's a bad translation. Servant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll have slaves, you know, um, no, uh, God forbid that it should be understood that way. 
uh, even even just servant of um, avadim in Hebrew doesn't mean necessarily servant. It means really it can means it comes from avoda. You no know, avodat Hashem. We are called servant of Hashem. It's pretty good to be a servant of Hashem. I don't see lashes or you know uh, being feeling like a slave in serving God. So, but it's a good question. It's, it's a good question. The the there was no Jewish pe people per se. They were the, he the Hebrews, right? The group of Hebrew that family that lived in Egypt that came from Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and that they, they, it spread out. The first commitment, originally, Adam Arishon, the first man, was to, bo, supposed to be that Jewish, everybody was supposed to be called Israel. All of humanity was supposed to be called Israel. It was never supposed to be Jews and non-Jews. It was supposed to be that one big humanity who chooses to marry God, so to speak, to be one with God. Because of the sin of Adam Arishon and because of the generation who little by little decide to go in an entirely different direction, meaning to actually disconnect from God and to live just a life of earth, a life of um, a physical life, like at the time of the flood. That's why God decided to wipe out everybody because the majority of humanity was actually not interested at all to have a relationship with God. Only Noah was the only one that was still connected uh, with, with a relationship. And God said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna start again. We'll give it another chance, another type of story of Gan Eden. Until eventually Avram came and started committed to actually look for God in a way that uh, a, a woman looks for a man or a man looks like for a woman and actually uh, found God. Um, and God decided that, you know, you are the, um, the example of what I want humanity to be. You're the example of what I wanted Adam and Eve to do. And therefore, since you, Avram, made, uh, made that choice, and, you know, that's why he made that choice, he made his bris mila. Why the bris? Because it means I'm ready to be intimate with God. I'm ready to be married to God. That's why it's you know it's on the sexual organ because for that reason. So therefore, uh, from now, so God said, "You are the perfect example. I want to make a nation out of you, and anybody who is your descendant will therefore uh, get, um, I would say, the privilege to be automatically part as long as they keep, you know, the the the, the basic covenant." Um, I will make them part of your of, of the mission that you choose upon yourself, which is to be a light into the nation. That's why he tells Abraham, all the families of the earth will be blessed through you, right? So um, it, 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 in that, that the whole world changed. The Ramchal says at that moment, it was a shift from anybody who could be Jewish, so to speak, any, anybody, not anybody who's Jewish, anybody, any nation could join as a whole to be part of become God's wife and so to speak and, and bring the rest of humanity. Um, but from then on, it was only um, through the people who are gonna, the individuals who are gonna convert and through, uh, and will be through the Jewish nations. So anybody could have joined the Hebrews, right? Um, and at that moment and at Har Sinai, just like Yisro did, right? Yisro was one, or Yitro was one of the few who joined and, um, and became part of the Jewish people. Now, this anybody today as an individual can come and convert, even if not originally a Jewish soul, although most of the people who are converting today are already Jewish souls from the past. Um, but individual from nation can technically graft themselves onto that mission of the Jewish people, which is to be a light on, uh, unto the nation. Um, and um, that's, that's a little bit the story. If, uh, did it make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, honestly, a lot of it broke out because I was oh. in the car and lost part of the service, but a lot of it I heard. Um, yes. Okay, if you're something unclear, sense. you can always ask me again uh, later, okay? Uh, um, Rabbi, I, I, yes. I'm sorry, but I, I want to know why the covenant is marked on males and nothing on women's. Um, 
Um, it's a good question because because uh, the 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 female power, the female energy is already connected directly to her soulmates, meaning because and, and that's why Adam Arishon, so to speak, was born circumcised, right? And Moshe Rabbeinu was born circumcised. If you're born already directly connected to God, right? You're already circumcised. A woman, she, she is already connected to God. And that's why she has the Bina Yesera. She's more connected to God than men directly. She has a higher level of Bina of, of prophetic power. Her, she's more connected. and um and therefore she doesn't need to 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 do that part because she's she's inherently connected to the male. she comes from the male right just like adam Eishon came from hashem the woman comes from adam and therefore there's a direct connection she's she's coming just here to have adam the the male energy but she's already circumcised so to speak right now However, there is something that I like to say. I actually never, I think, explained it, explained it publicly. Um, but the truth is, a woman also gets a circumcision, a mila, but it's an indirect mila. What's the mila that she gets? It's it's uh, it's a uh, it's called dambesula. Dambesula is the virgin virginity. Uh, the first time that she is with someone that's there's a tearing just same way there's a tearing by men when she concise to the tear of woman because the first time it, it's 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 a type of uh of breeze of um of covenant so in many ways she she explained it that way so again that's that's more kabbalistic i guess uh the idea is more that uh, a, a woman is naturally already connected to her husband Right, she according to the Ariza, she only reincarnated to help her husband, but technically she doesn't need a reincarnation, and um, and that's 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 the idea. So the Jewish nation circumcised to show that we are God's wife, so to speak, um, and um, but that that again the, the reason that we have that circumcision is because we're not really connected from the beginning if you're connected from the beginning you will be born without the the need for a bris mila like adam Arishon, who was directly connected okay so um so the men are meant to like daven a lot more and have to work harder to get closer to god than a woman does yes yes because by so this is so important to understand the women the, like also tznias is a very big thing that women have that men men don't really well actually do. men have loads of snews but they're not so aware of it because well, people only think of snews as a measurement and stuff like that but snews is much bigger i don't know how many men are really snews you know when Ad david amelech actually chose the people to go fight in his army he told them to go into the water and to drink water and so the might almost everyone went in the water like that with his with his mouth um like a dog basically <laughs> and, <laughs> no, it's, it's true those men you know and then uh, 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 so he took it up all those guys get out you you cannot be part of my army and so and there were a few people who went and took water with their hands like that and brought it like that so he said you are going to be part of my army so it shows you already that to be part of god's army to be part of you know royalty and and serve god on the highest level be next to the king you need to have a certain level of snoot as a man and we we should be teaching more snoots to the men than the women really a woman is naturally a tsunua by nature the only reason women dress uh, provocative in the way in the world today is because of the failure of men to appreciate the women for who they are and um and 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 
and giving them the love and respecting them for the, who they for their for their the greatest of the feminine power. And because of that, because men are not real men, then then women are trying to seduce men on a more physical level, and uh, ends up to be the world we have in today. So it's really men's fault if women are not nude. So you know, uh, but but uh, obviously there's a yetsa. Everybody has a yetsa. You know, it doesn't mean that every woman is like. You know, but the but the idea that's the root. That's the root. If one is feels love, if one is balanced, he doesn't need to be provocative with his body because you love me for my soul. You love me for who I am. You love me for my personality, for my soul, and not because I have you know curves and stuff like that. And uh, the, the the woman who 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 drives super provocatively is because they're desperate from attention from a man, and since there's no real man who is going to look in the inside, so they they're going to make it show on the outside and get a feeling that they actually loved when really it's all physical uh, temptation that that you have all those men who are like uh, dogs. Uh, and, and I mean, that, women can have the same thing though. It, yeah, it happened. It happened. But in a world where with men, with men respecting women, it wouldn't happen. Right. But there's always exception. Okay. But yes, it, 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 yeah, so, sometimes it, you're right. But usually it's, it starts with the men. Why do you think Eve, uh, Chava, was alone in Gan Eden, hanging out with a snake? Looking <laughs> for attention. Yes. We we I heard I heard I heard about the Kabbalah that it says okay, this is just something someone told me. Yeah, yeah. Um that the that there forbidden fruit, the forbidden fruit was the snake, the snake had arms and eggs, so it was like a man, and that Chava had sex with the snake. Yes, yes, that's correct. That's but correct. But then the question is, how did she get Adam to take a bite also? That's why oh, I'm confused. Well, well I, I think, um, well, it says because he, um, well, I don't know if he slept with the snake, but uh, he, he, he accepted, accepted the situation. He didn't, you know, he should have uh, fought with the snake and he didn't fight with the snake, right? Mm. He, he, it's, uh, it's almost he let himself be taken by that, but it, it was too late. She was already infused with the venom of the snake, so to speak. And he had the only choice to just follow um, and, and, and follow Eve, right? He, his, soul, his soulmate that now had been affected. If I'm the guy who is, doesn't take care of my wife and now my wife is looking for attention and now is being... Um, attacked or is, is, is being approached by sneaky people, then who is the responsible? It's me. So at the end, I'm the one who has now to go deal with the snake, right? Because if, if, I, if, if I've taken good care of my wife, she wouldn't be hanging out with sneaky people. Okay, but then a then question, so I, maybe, I, maybe I had a cutout part when you were talking about how the woman <laughs> well, we... well it's happening in both sides i think why well, not yeah yeah it, it's it's happening both sides, but mostly mostly for from the men it started it started with the men sorry man uh, so anyway we, I, we I, have if, we have like a five part uh five classes or six just on the story of ganed and all about that it's a very very important to yeah i don't know if you heard it but it's worth listening to it's it's really powerful and also, um, according with the science, it's saying that men's are more visual and females are more auditory. Yes. So we are craving for nice words and guys are craving for a nice look. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. And, and that's why in, in the exile, it's all about listening to the Torah. We don't see Hashem. We lost our male power and we're more in a feminine mode because we are the wife of Hashem. So it's a Shema Israel. We are listening. And also Shema, uh, um, it's, it, com it comes from the word intimacy. Um, it's, I think it's in Shah Shirim. I, I forgot the, 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 the word, but it means be intimate with me. It's a, uh, Israel, be intimate with me. So listening is a form of intimacy, especially... Uh, from the woman's side, uh, because listening is more internal in a way, right? And and um, 
uh, we lost we lost that level of the Rea, the first ten, tab, ten commandments. We saw we saw God, we saw the ten commandments, and then we lost it. Now it was broken. Now we are second luchos, and that's the Torah Shebealpe. Is the Torah that needs to be spoken? Is the Torah that we need to transmit uh, in exile? Is the feminine Torah? So. That's so what, that visual and auditory, it's not exclusive for males or females. We have both. Yeah, yeah. We need it both. We we need we need both, and they know. They that's why it says at Mount Sinai we re reach the level of the see. You could see the sound and you could could hear the the the, the colors or whatever. It was a mix of the senses of hearing and seeing. Because there was a complete unity between the male and female, and between uh, those two senses. So uh, yeah, okay. So that was a long uh, misconception, <laughs> but but I think very important uh, things. So the chosen nation and, and the chosen God. We are the chosen nation because we chose God. So therefore, God decided to choose us. We wanted to get married, and He decided, okay, I'll marry you. Therefore, so. It's not a we have to look at our Judaism not as something forced, but something as a, 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 a choice that we made. And every Jew has converted because they were never a Jew that didn't convert. Every Jew is someone who chose to convert, to choose to be married, to choose the mission. It's all about choice. And that's what fixes the first sin, which was a choice between making married to God or not. Uh, or two different approach or two ways to get married to God, a way of exile and a way, a direct way. And we chose the way of exile because we, we didn't really understand our female power. Uh, the, the, the whole end of exile is really going back to the origin, origin, original sin to understand that being a female, meaning to be God's female is not bad. Being female is not second class. Being female is not lower. Being female is being equal. I mean, that's why we have that whole feminist movement and the whole thing in the world for generations and generations. The fight between male and female, civil rights, it's all about we are a couple. And even you don't have to feel that you're God to feel equal. God loves you in unconditionally. God, God loves you crazy and he chooses to marry you. So if God chooses to marry you, why would you feel second class? Why you feel bad? So that, that whole history and generation is part of that concept and, and to feel that God loves you as you are and he doesn't look down on you and you shouldn't feel that I'm just a human being, therefore I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, that's what, that's what we always think. That's what the Yetzirah wants us, makes us to feel all the time because we sin, because we're not perfect. We'll never be perfect because only God is perfect. But you're part of God anyway, so it's it perfect imperfections. So you don't need to go get stuck into the, that. I'm 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 too bad. I'm too low. I see all that. God made you. God made the Satan. God made the Sarah. God created potential for evil. He knew that was going to happen. Just let yourself be loved. Just accept the love unconditionally and embrace God with your full heart and love. And that's what Judaism is supposed to teach to the world. That's what Judaism is supposed to reveal, that God wants a relationship with humanity. No matter how low it fell, it's, it's constantly waiting for, for us to choose him again and to want, to want him again. That's why we have to want Moshiach. We have to want God again and, and not being afraid. Um, so that's... That's the secret. <laughs> okay, number 57, teshuva. So teshuva, there's a misconception that when you do teshuva, you have to be sad and you have to feel so bad about your sin and you hurt your chest and I'm a sinner, I'm bad. And you know, Rosh Hashanah, I cry and Yom Kippur, I cry. Um, I want to remind everybody that Rosh, uh, Yom Kippur, is one of the two happiest days of the year. Ho oh, ho. But I say all my sin in front of God. Yeah, I say all my, my, all my, my sins in, in front of God, but that, it, it, that's the happiest, because God accepts human beings who sin because we, he created that. 
and he's okay that we sin. It's not it's not a bad thing. What what teshuva really is? Teshuva is not something sad. We're not supposed to do teshuva out of sadness. We're supposed to do teshuva out of happiness. First of all, you're doing a mitzvah. Which mitzvah? The most amazing mitzvah in the world. The mitzvah to return to God. So already, when you do, when you have sin already, and you want to do teshuva. You should be so happy that you choose to go back to God because that's all God wants. When the kid does a, a, a mistake, so the parents are not so happy. But the moment the, the kids wants to say, oh, no, I want to be good again and come to the parents, the parents is so happy. You want to be good. That's, that's all what I want. You to choose to want to be good and, and, uh, and, and not make mistakes again. So that's, that's the first step. One, you 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 want to do teshuva it has to be done out of joy out of happiness and um and that's the first step that's the first step we should we should not think that teshuva is something that has to come through sadness or or you know being depressed we jews have we are professional in feeling guilty we're the the people who feel the most guilty on earth and, uh, um, and, and, and that's guilt is not a Jewish word. It's not a Jewish thing. We can have a bit of shame. We can have regret. But if the feelings you have about your mistakes bring you to be sad and depressed, it's not good. That's not part of uh, the, the serving God. God wants you to be happy. God wants to feel good about yourself. Yeah, you sin. that's fine. He created potential for sin. He knew you were going to sin. That's why he created Teshuva. So really, the moment you are in the process of doing Teshuva, you should be filled with joy because that's, that's all what God wants. Uh, teshuva has to be a happy process, not a depressing process. Plus, the moment you make the commitment to try to be better, right? Even if it's daily, right? There are certain sins we do daily. We say something wrong daily. So, But every day is like a new day. It's like a new life. And you, as long as you're committed to try to be good, you're committed to return to God, then God looks at it as if you had done um, uh, complete teshuva. And, and, and that's, that's, that's the joy that we should have. That's the joy we should have, okay? Now, it doesn't mean we should not um, you know, regret what we have done and, and uh, do go through the process of teshuva, which is to fix what we have done and to ask for her forgiveness and all that but it shouldn't be done in a negative way in a sad and depressed way on the contrary god wants you to do teshuva out of joy and out of love what it, if you do teshuva because you're you, let's say ashamed or you made a bad decision and then you make the same mistake again you mean like all of us some of us. <laughs> uh, trust me, all, all of us. Uh, we, 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 we always think that's part of the Jewish guilt. We always think that I'm probably the most guilty because I, we all have our sins, you know, our own demons and, uh, and that we keep repeating. It's, it's um, the, the Satan, you have to understand, the trick and the technique of the Satan is to do everything for us to give us, to give up hope on ourselves. And, and say you're not worthy. It's like I'm, you're a bad person. You're not good enough. You're dirty. You're, you're impure. You're this, you're that. That sounds like the snaky approach of the snake who is just trying to make you feel bad. Each time you feel bad about uh, uh, something and that, that feeling bad puts you down and doesn't help you, you know, go up, you know it's the snake. Okay, so what are you supposed to do instead? Just do teshuva again and again until you learn your lesson? Yes, yes, but teshuva in a positive way is we are soldiers. We are chayalim shel Hashem, chayal Hashem. And the tzaddik is, what do you say about tzaddik? He falls seven times. The tzaddik, it doesn't say a benoni, it doesn't say an average person. The tzaddik, the tzaddik falls seven times. I thought the tzaddik never falls. Uh uh uh. Maybe a tzaddik gamur, maybe one in a million, but even Moshe Rabbeinu fell. Moshe Rabbeinu is not called Moshe HaTzaddik, only Yosef. He was the only one, and we learned from him. But even Yosef had some 
set back, right? So, but a tzaddik who is someone who falls seven times, but what does he do? He goes back up seven times, right? So that's, that means that if you, if, if, if us, we sin, but each time we sin, we keep coming back up and we lift ourselves, we're actually tzaddikim. It, it doesn't seem so. It sounds like, what? No, it can't be. Well, yeah. That's what it says from Chazal. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it feels good. <laughs> we all said it, but you have to go back up. You have to lift yourself up and not beat yourself up because then that's, that's the trick of the Yitzhara. Because if you beat yourself back, uh, back up, then you'll never go back up. Um, and and, and you, you, you're never going to win the war. So that's, that's the approach. The approach is, uh, even Rocky said it, Rocky Balboa. Uh, you know, he's big. He said, "It's life is gonna crush you down, and and you're gonna be on the ring, and the box, the boxer, whatever, is gonna break you apart, all that." And it's at that moment that you know if you're a real man. If you go back up, this is what life is about. Life is about not falling down. This is always always gonna be part of of of, of life. What makes you a real Human being is that power to go back up after every fall. That's 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 the power, and never giving up. There's not. It's unconditional love. If it's unconditional love, it doesn't matter if it happened a million times. There's going to be a point where I will eventually stand. But until then, I keep getting back up, and that's that's the key. The moment you don't feel that way, that's this. That's the snake. That's the sneaky mind that's saying, nah, it's, it's you did it you did it a million a million times you spoke like 355,000 times and 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 you were jealous looking at the person like 565,000 times uh, it, it's it's there's no hope for you well guess what yes there is because i'm not a snake i go back up i don't lose my leg right the snake look, lost his leg he cannot stand where i still have my legs and i'm still gonna stand and beat the crap out of my snake snake uh, snake voice so right that's that's the difference between the snake and us we have legs to stand back up so um it, it actually is, it's the perfect example the satan is someone who cuts your leg off and makes you feel like you're on the ground and you cannot go back up this is exactly what the snake is that's exactly what happened and as long as you have snake and you go back up right the greatest hero war heroes are the people who you know when, stood back up when even though they were injured and even though they then didn't give up they didn't give up it, it, it's interesting that you say that rabbi because actually scientifically the snakes cannot go for uh backwards mm. they always go forward oh that's but interesting. they are not they are not able to go back that's they have good. to turn mm. that's good i like that that's like that so it's, it's even a, a lesson we, we can learn from the snake. She, she can only go back forward, right? No, no backward. That's, uh, that's good. That's good. Always move forward. That is one of my favorite quotes. Um, uh, it's one of my favorite quotes. Let's see if I can find it right away. From um, Rabbi Israel Sananter. Oh, I know where I have it. Um, Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, actually, it's interesting also that in order the 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 snake to go back needs to put their head, their eyes on the back, looking on the past, mm. in in order to be able to go back. But no cat can, cannot go. It's, it's it's so amazing how Hashem made everything. It is amazing. And it takes amazing people to see amazing things that I made. <laughs> so look, at, that's what, one of my favorite quotes from Rabbi Israel Salanter. That's how he says like that. People say, if you cannot go forward, you must go back. But I say, if you cannot go forward, you must go forward. So he said like, you have a wall in front of you. Just and people, I'm gonna go back. I say you don't go back. You go through the wall and you go until you you break through until you it happens. Um, 
right so that's that's the that's the that's the idea okay so that was the about teshuva uh stop feeling bad and feeling oh i'm a bad jew i'm a bad human being i'm i'm bad this i'm bad that that's not teshuva that's a, a sneaky teshuva a real teshuva is i'm a soldier i failed i take full responsibility for what i've done it's okay i made mistake what really inside of me I want to be close to God. And the biggest proof that this is who I am is because right now I'm trying to go back up. I'm trying to connect to God. Despite everything I've done wrong, this is what I want now. And I'm doing steps to go towards it. I fail again tomorrow. It doesn't matter because I'm going back up. And each time I go back up, I'm showing that this is my authentic self wants that. It's just my animal self and my the, the, the other part of myself that makes me fall. Um, that makes me think of a question. Okay, good. Um, not to put like, I hope this doesn't come out the wrong way, but the way like you're coming back to Judaism, you're like learning so many new things and it's, and you're, you're working on yourself and all this stuff a lot. It kind of seems like in AA or NA when they tell you like not to date <laughs> while you're going through the process. Right. <laughs> so I'm just curious what your thoughts are on like, if you're really like just starting now like a whole new journey do you believe in like growing with someone or is it more like oh i mean ultimately it's different for everyone but i'm sure like what is your thoughts uh, on that? that's a good that's a very good question um no i believe you can you can grow with someone as long as it's someone who um who is also a type of soldier but more more important uh, who is able to embrace the whole of the person. I mean, it has to be someone with a huge heart, um, someone who can really accept the other, um, the whole of the other and, and, and grow together. Um, also, also someone who is a pillar to help the other, right? Meaning he, who is healthy and strong and, and help the other lift, lift the other up out of love and out of full acceptance and all that or someone who not necessarily is super healthy yet, but is on the same journey of growing. Because sometimes when we, uh, you know, it's like the two legs. So you have the two, you need the two legs to, uh, so I don't think that for, I think for Teshuva, I don't think you need to do it alone. I, I think it's, it's a little bit different than, than uh, you know, getting, getting sober. <laughs> so i wasn't really comparing it to that i just no 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 but it's a, it's a, it's a good, it was a good example it was a good example i, I, like, I like the question i like it's a good question um sometimes we can accomplish more when we're two when when we're two people helping each other and, and uh, in the same you know like a partner i mean this is the reason why we get married right to to to, to work something out together and it, that's what I tell every couple. The, the key for a couple to stay together is to have that one mission and that you both envision that one main goal, whether it's like a happy family or to be truly in love or to truly be close to God and everything depends on that and that's your goal, then it doesn't matter the ups and downs because at the end you're attached to that thing and that's what's gonna keep you together. Because yes, we're, 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 we're fighting, yes, we're doing this, but at the end, we want to reach that. So we know to get there, there's gonna be a, bit of, a lot of ups and downs, but eventually you're gonna reach the, stop, the, the top together. So that's, that's the key for couples to, to really stay together is that, the, the, that have that one goal. And, and like, the, like the Goim say it uh, very nicely under their uh, wedding ceremony for the better and for the worse. And I, I think it should be added to the Jewish uh, <laughs> wedding ceremony because very I'll, often... Um, I'll add it to mine. <laughs> <laughs> because I really feel that, uh, I mean, you know, I teach it to my, to my uh, Hatan uh, and Kala, you know, that I teach, but it's, it's really, uh, they, they, very often, they're not ready to go through the better and the worse only go for the, for the better. And uh, that's, not a, that's not a real commitment. It's not a breeze. 
Okay, so that was number 57. Number 58. Okay, 58 is a little bit, okay, it's very similar actually to 57. The 58 is um, about how I'm supposed to feel after I sin. The, the common misconception is that after I sin, I should feel terrible about myself. Okay. Um, and, and I'm a sinner and I'm bad on, and, and we, we like to crush ourselves in a, in a way to feel, uh, to feel better about ourselves. We make, we push ourselves down. Really, uh, that's not the right approach. The right approach after we sin is to right away say, I sin, but that's, that's not me. Uh, parts of me push me to sin. Uh, my soul, we have to understand, your soul is pure and your soul will never sin. How do I know? We say every morning, right? God, the soul you place in me is pure. And we say that every Jew, every morning. So what, are we lying to ourselves? No, your soul is pure. And if you just had your soul and you didn't have a body, your body, you will never do one sin. Now, you were given a body and you were given a mission and you were given a challenge and you have been pushed by all those challenges, those negative forces by the animalistic body and you that, that, that pulled you to make the wrong decision. But that's not you. That's this, you, you have, yes, you are responsible for letting you be influenced, but it still doesn't define you as a sinner, your soul cannot be touched. A diamond can fall into the mud, but it's a muddy diamond, but still a diamond. Your diamond always stays the same. You remove the mud, you wash the diamond, it goes back to shining bright. That's our soul and, and us in this world. So it's just that teshuva, right? We, we, we wash ourselves. We need to take showers every day. We need to do teshuva every day. That's why do you think we have to go to the bathroom every day? Five times a day. You know, the bathroom is an exercise for teshuva. Of course, right? That's why we go to the bathroom, no? <laughs> Each time you go. Like, like if you, every day, whatever, everyone makes mistakes every day, whether they're big or small. But the next day, as long as you're trying to be good, even if you continue <laughs> to make that mistake again in the future, that's it. You're, you're still doing, like, that's a good thing. It, no, the, what, what, no it, I mean, it's not good to continue. Well, it, oh. it, it, obviously, but it's... But it, I mean, I'm sorry, my question is, are you really not supposed to dwell on what you did and really feel bad about it? Because... That's correct. You're not supposed to dwell on it because the more you dwell on it, the more you're going to be pu pushed to just continue doing it. What's going to be more productive, it says, I'm sorry, that's not me. I'm not going to think about it. I will come back to it. I need to fix it. I need to deal with it. But with the clarity that that's not me i'm my 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 own self will never do it out of free choice right there's a reason why we say that the gemara says when someone seen he's a ruach stus there's a spirit of craziness that go in your mind and that pushes you is not the person himself the same way you say someone who gets angry someone who is angry, it's as if he does actual Avodazara, idolatry. Like, what? Yeah, because Avodazara means you you are you, you're transforming, you know, you see someone beginning angry that I don't recognize you. You're, you're a strange person. That's not you. So you're doing a Avodazara, a service that is strange, that is different. It's not you. You lose. That's why someone who actually gets angry and speak with anger that we don't we don't listen to it. it it doesn't count because whatever that person said obviously we get hurt because you know sometimes we know it's true so we get but 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 technically uh, we shouldn't get hurt if we are humble and we know who we are okay that person lost its mind it's it's speaking nonsense it's uh, not controlling itself and its emotion and therefore um uh, but, doesn't get angry yes but, but okay two things if we don't feel bad about it, how we can repent? How we can feel this By feeling separation? Because it is feeling bad and feeling responsible. Meaning, yes, I made a mistake. 
I'm responsible for my mistake. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to work on that. But it doesn't define me for who I am. So right? don't stick with, with the, no, with don't, the remorse. Yeah. Right. Like don't, don't. bad and get depressed. And, right. And... Right. That, that's, that's, that's the snake. The snake wants you to feel like that. Okay. So what about when you are not aware that you commit a sin? So, uh, well, that's why when, when we do Teshuvah, we try to say, you know, that we, um, for the sins that we are not aware, on Yom Kippur, we mentioned the sin that we're aware and the sin that we're not aware. Or even when we say Vidui, right? Pogamnu, Oshamnu, right? Osham, Pashanu, Kihatanu, and Pashanu, Khatanu and Pashanu. So there's the sins that we did intentionally and the sins that we didn't do intentionally. So th that's, um, you mentioned you mentioned both. You mentioned both, and you try to at least fix. You, we ask Hashem to allow us to fix even the things that we're not aware, because uh, we're kind of still responsible on on a small level for what we uh, for what we sin, meaning uh, without um, being aware of. Because if we were really aware and really close to God and really at our best, we will not even do any sin. It's still, it's even though if you know and 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 it's still something like a in my in my case, I feel something like it's not right. Something is is out of the place. Oh, you feel right? Okay, so if you feel that way, then. Then that's you take right right away the approach of you know God. Yeah, and, and, I, and I beg Hashem to open my eyes, what I did wrong and how can I fix it. So that, that that's perfect. That's that's the right approach. That's the right approach. But don't make yourself feel so depressed and 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 in in a, in a in the state of of I'm I'm a bad person because that's that's the language of the snake and um it's not true first of all and um it's uh, it doesn't help it's not productive we have to always judaism has to be a, 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 like a um a way of life that is productive that leads you to be to become greater and to become uh, more positive and to become more loving and to become more responsible, but not with fear and not with sadness or depression. That's that's the opposite way. Um, okay, so that's the the misconception fifty eight that we should the appropriate response after a sin is not to be sad or depressed is to actually um, being aware that my soul is pure and that the sin is not my essence. And therefore, I should be happy that I can uh, that I can serve God, and um, I repent. But I repent through joy. I repent by coming close to God and taking responsibility for my action, because that's what a human being is. So, um, not getting stuck with sadness. Okay, number fifteen nine. There's a misconception that. If I do all the commandments, I will go to heaven. Uh, I go to Olam Abba. Well, my dear friends, this is not so. <laughs> because um, the misconception is that, you know, if I'm religious, in all 16 commandments, you know, that's, that, that's all what God wants. No, 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 no. You don't understand. You can be doing all the commandments and being far away from God because it's not about doing the commandments. It's about being one with God. It's about the relationship I'm creating, the connection, the bounding I do with God and with other human beings. So someone who does, now obviously I'm saying, saying all the do all the commandments. If we were doing all the commandments properly, we will not be able to kill a mosquito. We will not be able to say one word, word of anger, okay? But, uh, you know, because part of being religious and doing the commandments is to have extremely good character traits, to have extreme sensitivity to the world. But unfortunately, um, 
those commandments, like the Ramchal says, like the Rabbeinu Bachia says in Chovos Alibabos, uh, people forget that loving someone else and not hurting a fly and you know uh, being being loving and all that is part of the commandments. Um, being being humble and being patient and being sensitive and being uh, attentionate and giving, all that is part of the commandment. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, there's a lot of people who think that as long as I do the commandments, I'm, go I'm good, I'm going to heaven, is good. My friends, you can be doing all the commandments, all the 613 commandments, and you can go to hell. You can go and, and you can lose your olam abba because if I do all the commandments, I look super religious, I do all the, six, all the stuff, but I hurt another human being, then you lost everything because it's God has doesn't care at all you doing the commandments God cares that you become a loving sensitive sensitive uh, beautiful human being that's 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 what God wants and the commandments are only here as tools to help us become better people but if I don't use the commandments that way it's a waste it doesn't do anything it, it's 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 a it's like someone who wants to to feel good about himself and, and therefore he put chains of gold on him and you know like he dressed super nice but really he's all dirty under he's, it's, he's so he's he puts someone wants to put makeup to look good right you, you don't need you if you're dirty and under it doesn't matter what makeup you put you know god knows what's inside so so we we have to be careful with that rush that strong desire to want to do all the commandments. Yes, it's a good desire because we want to be close to God and we want to show God, but sometimes we jump into the rituals and we do all the commandments and we forget the basic foundation, which is to be a good person. That's the foundation. And if I don't have that, I don't have Olamaba. I don't have heaven because heaven is only for good people not for religious people. So, uh, uh, um, you know, obviously the ideal is that every religious person should be a good person. But we see in, in today's world, you know, you can look like you have a beard falling till the ground, you know, and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, look like a super uh, rabbi but under you know it's it's uh it, it's disgusting what's under it's so we have to be very careful and that's part by way of all the erev rav i don't know if we're gonna have time to to talk about it today we're already almost uh, we're basically over time so i don't want to push it too much um but eventually i wanted to speak about the erev rav because a lot of what we spoke today you know that 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 frenzy of to be religious and to to be very strict and to you know be harsh on the sinners and all that all that is part of the area of rav trying to control the people and make people do things out of fear and um and um, make us feel guilty and you know the snake the, the snake basically um so but part of the area of rav which is the mixed multitude the people the which are the the falls the false righteous people basically within the Jewish people are usually uh, nowadays are the heads. As you say, the Zohar and the Binagon, there's a lot of very religious looking rabbis and really their, their soul is not a Jewish soul or, or they're completely corrupted by the Yetzara or the Satan and therefore they really are not good people. So that's, that's the challenge. If you want to know if a rabbi is a real rabbi, you have to look at his heart. You have to look at how he speaks about other people, how he loves others, how he speaks to his wife and to his children. Then, and if he works on himself, then you can know if he's an authentic, uh, good rabbi. Um, Okay, so we'll finish with, with uh, the number 60. 60 is a good number. Um, the number 60 is 
the misconception that there are certain sins for which you cannot do teshuva for, or certain sins you cannot repent for, right? Teshuva was created before the world was created for, that, for the very purpose to tell you that no matter what's going to happen, you can always come back, you can always fix everything. Yes, sometimes you have to come back in the Gilgul, you need to be reincarnated. You have to come back from a previous life to fix something. But there is nothing that is not fixable. Um, uh, be, and and that's that's the greatest joy in a way. Is the greatest gift is that we can repair everything. You can do teshuvah. The Zohar says you can do teshuvah for everything. There's not one sin. Whenever then that the stipler says. Because they used to say, oh, if uh, for sexual, you know, um, sins that, uh, or you know, you, you cannot do shuva. Sometimes you see statement like that. The stipler explains the Zohar, not just the stipler, but the stipler um, says that it it's because it's much harder. Those are sins that are much harder to do shuva for. So because certain sins are done again and again and again, we almost it almost feels it's almost impossible to do shuba, but it's never impossible. And it, you're always able to do shuba for absolutely everything. So we should never feel that I'm stuck. I did something that it can not be fixed. Uh, I'm doomed. That's not Jewish. That's, that's not uh, what we believe in. Um, everything can be corrected. What about like when you first learn... Um that you can do chuva for anything and then it's like okay so then let me uh, do whatever i want and then later i'll do chuva you know um what if you like do something with the intention of doing chuva for it later you're very aware that you're doing something wrong and okay you do it anyway right so yeah well yeah, yeah you can you cannot do you, you cannot uh do a uh, sin we say oh i'm gonna i'm gonna do it i'm gonna repent this it's because this is a tricky one because when we sin we know we see we we're gonna we we know we're sinning most of the time so so but when you say intentional sin is meaning there is the one who does it i know like oh, i'm gonna do it again and then i'm gonna have to do chuva again that that that's that's how we all kind of function i think when it says that you cannot do chuva for something you you plan is like when you actually want to go against God and say, "I'm God, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to do this against you," and um, uh, and you're fighting God directly, that's very different. Every sin we do, we know we're sinning, but it's rare that you do it. That I really want to sin on purpose and do it, but and I don't care. I will do tshuva. No, it's like I know I'm going to sin and. I know I have to, and, and I know this teshuva, so I'll be able to do teshuva. Otherwise, I will... Right, no, no, not, not like intentional in a bad way like that. More like because you already know about teshuva and we are aware when we're sinning. It's like, I know I'm going to have to do teshuva for this. Right. No, like but it's, it's more like... Ugh. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, it, it is a... Uh, um, you said it well. That's, that's really how we look at it. We, we, we understand that we're going to sin every Yom Kippur, we come again. And, you know, if it was a joke, then, you know, I, I wouldn't do Yom Kippur because what? Oh, yeah, I, I'm sorry, God. And next day after Yom Kippur, already I start doing the same thing. Like, am I faking myself? No, because Yom Kippur, I mean, it can be every day, but especially Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, you're saying, God, you know who I am? Look at me today. How do I look? You know, I, I, I look holy. I'm a pure soul. I want you. I don't want to sin. I want to be authentic, but I'm a human being. So that's okay. God said, that's okay. I'll give you one Yom Kippur where you can clean yourself as much as you can because at least once a year you show this is who I am. And, and this idea of Yom Kippur, we can do it every day. Remember that every holiday that we have, are lessons and energies and powers to use messages to use for every day 
Every day I have, I can connect to the message of Yom Kippur. Every day I can connect to the message of Pesach and free myself from any addictions. Every day I have the capacity to connect myself to Shavuot and connect to God on an intimate level through his Torah. So every holiday has something that I can take for every day. Because every day is like one life. Don't look at the past. Don't look at the future. This today. And today, I love God. <laughs> <laughs> and I love myself. And today so I want to <laughs> Okay, it's it's But if that but if that's you doing well, then what's the reason for like uh, sometimes having really crazy amounts of challenges and bad things happening even when you're doing your best? You know, they say something that like they say you're supposed to really get divine assistance when you're working on becoming a better person or especially when you're getting closer to God. And sometimes it feels like when you're really trying, it gets even harder. As so it, it's true, but you know, sometimes you have a coach and the coach, he knows you're good. He knows you know how to fight and he's going to give you an opponent that is even stronger than you. And he knows you're going to fail, but because he wants you to be beaten down and go back up and become stronger. And therefore he is going to, God is the greatest coach, you know. Go to, to an extent, to an extent, at some point you're going to get permanent damage. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So, 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 so God said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you Rabbi G to, to, to make, make sure that you, you don't stand the ground. <laughs> you're going to make sure you're going to go back up and, um, you know, get some uh, Hasidus. But yes, it's sometimes, you know, I'm telling you, if we were surrounded with much more positivity, if our Judaism was a, a place of much more um love and 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 happy you know i don't see happy jews i don't see happy jews i'm sorry i did i don't see they smiling then down the street like that walking like a jewish it should be the happiest nation in the world the lighter to the nation i it's like you know you have those you, I, I go to africa in those tribes and they all dancing yeah yeah, yeah and it's super happy that, that's how the jewish nation should be and it will be that way with the Besamikdash. You say anybody who went to the Besamikdash, they was like, wow, you know, I want to be Jewish. So much holiness, so much joy, so much inspiration, so much uh, love. But, okay, we, 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 we lost that light and we need to get that, back, that light back again. And uh, that's, uh, that's why we need the women, you know, so I count on you guys. It's 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 <laughs> no pressure, <laughs> but 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 uh, you know how many women after birth, after being on uh, trying to give birth and it's nothing more painful and, and difficult, and and she's smiling and she's ready to have another baby. Say, are you crazy, woman? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not crazy because she knows that a process, a dark, a difficult process, can lead to something so beautiful. And so loving. So this is the, the power of the female that every man needs to learn from, and a power that the woman's that the woman needs to to uh, know she has is that power to give birth and to know that there's a process and that process is difficult. And when you're about to give birth, it's like the most difficult moment of the entire birth process. But from that pain, from that challenge and that uh, a tremendous um, intensity of the moment that comes the greatest love of her life so much so that my wife loves my kids more than me can you imagine it's like i'm jealous <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah <That's> yeah <laughs> Yes, I, I have the her. exact same worry. I have the exact same worry of having kids because I know that my husband is going to like my kids more than me and I will be jealous. No, 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 no. I'm jealous before it even happens. No, 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 no. no. It's the, mo the mother who loves the kids more. The husband, he loves his wife more. Yeah. I don't know. Yes, yes. Know. In the majority. <laughs> you don't know majority until they're there. You don't know until they're there. Some kids could really be a pain in the butt, you know? <laughs> well, that's that's true. That's, that's true. But 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 the truth is, in most cases, the woman loves. She it was much harder for her to deal with to give birth than to take care of her husband. <laughs> much more mm -hmm. uh, right and no. And, <laughs> well, it depends. Not... Actually, no. It's, it's true. Actually, <laughs> taking care of a husband they, is they, much they harder. <laughs> <laughs> it's a daily. <laughs> Revered <laughs> 24, 24 7. No, you're right. You're right. Giving birth to a husband is much worse. 
And it's a look the size. It's, it's like a big baby. <laughs> it's a huge baby. Maintaining a husband is, is a lot of work all the time. Yeah, much more complex. Yeah. yeah, and and he wants food, but he could technically cook himself. <laughs> the baby cannot cook himself. Look at those babies. No, it's it's true. <laughs> the man should cook. The man we we as a woman, the thing is that we are connected to the moon. We have our times that we can shine and we have our times that we are, looks like we are not there, but we're still there. We are working, actually, when there is no moon, which, which is Rosh Chodesh, is, is, is when there is more power. Mm. It's, it's, Perfect. it's, uh. yeah, so that we are, we are connected to that energy. And it's as if we just learn how much power we have. And sadly, in, in these days, we think like a power is a strength. And we don't, we don't see that the power of a smile, the power right. of a sweet word, the power of seduction, things that only women can have naturally. <laughs> It, it, it is <laughs> she knows <laughs> no i mean some people some men do but typically yeah, and women it just comes naturally yeah yeah they're, they're much they're, they're much uh much better at it it's smooth yes it's smooth. It's, 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 I, I, and i've been seeing in girls very very young girls how they seduce daddy oh yeah my it, daughter she, eyes. She, she sees me all the time she, she it's it's you you see it, the a daughter who is close to her father she fights against the mother to have her her place it's like it's a interesting uh dynamic and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 it's it's so natural so and so powerful and we don't have to to fight or, or we don't have to 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 impose ourselves it's so easy so right. so easy like the moon the moon is moving the world the, the moon is moving the oceans it is is moving the nature is moving the plants in in a very uh silent way and in a very beautiful way too because it's it's how usually people who is in love they they prefer to be under the moon than to be under the sun, I think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's because it's more romantic at night under the moon, but, but the sun is not the same. Maybe at sunset a, a bit, but but yeah, or you're Mexico. right. Mexico. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's uh, but yeah, you're, you're right. It's it's the true power of the woman and and really the true power of the exile we go through and the true secret behind all the dark moments that we go in our life is that within those dark moments is actually a seed i would call it the seed of the warrior there is something there that even though it looks so dark even it looks like there's no light there's actually at that moment something being created right there's something about to emerge and the darkest time like you said rosh chodesh um uh, and or, or or like we say birth and there's many, many examples like that where right now, for example, in the winter where everything looks dead, there's no more leaves on the tree. It looks like it's death and the, and the nature is dying. And right now we're going to have, we're coming soon on Shvat. And that's where the sap of the tree is actually going up. That's under that death looking world, there's the energy going already in a hidden way in the tree the water that was there from the snow is is going in the tree and giving the sap getting ready for a spring again so within the darkness there's always some light and um, usually we you know when we suffer we're not supposed to to try to okay why did i suffer why did i suffer because it's we cannot see the whole picture however what we're supposed to focus on that's my rebbe always tells me you focus on what it enabled you to achieve after that. What has become of you? What have you, what type of warrior you became because of that, right? Because you 
went through it and now you have come out of that darkness or you at least you have crawled out and try to uh, deal with it you have become another human being you have transformed yourself you're not the same mm-hmm. and you have strength and clarity and and now a new a new birth of you so to speak and you're going to be stronger than ever the people that are the greatest heroes are always people who have went through the most difficult challenge in their life they're always the top the most happy people at the end and the one who achieved the most in, in their lives because they they know what pain is they know what darkness is and they have learned to go out of it and and to go beyond and that's those are the always the greatest heroes so uh yeah i mean you take uh, just as in one example david amelech David Amelech thought he was a bastard. He thought he was an illegit- illegitimate child. He, and he was not accepted by his family. He was not part of the family whatsoever. Uh, when Shmuel come to make him king, he was the father didn't bring him uh, that he's one of his son. And, and um, his, <laughs> his own son raped all his wives and his own son tried to kill him and uh, this king david his closest friend achitofel his, his closest son raped friend. his wives yeah all his wives 18 wives and and even his closest uh, uh, counselor not counselor the advisor achitofel went against him tried to to take over to put him take him down so so David Amelech is the one who went through the most difficult challenge and he became the king of Israel. He became the greatest person of the Jewish people and especially because of that, because he had learned, that's what Tehillim is. Tehillim, the why they are so powerful because he took all his pain, all his darkness, all his thing and he transformed it into a song. It, it's it's um, David Amelech's um, um, uh, I was journaling, journaling, writing his his life, his story, and it's his therapy book. And he shared it with us to show us how you can go from total darkness to 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 joy, to singing, to come to become a singer. And we we are supposed to the Rishis Chachma says that we're supposed to learn from Diana to, to make our own song, to take our lives, to take the dark moment and make our own Tehillim, to make our own and seeing our challenges, our darkness and how we have raised up little by little um, to become our own Moshiach. Because David Amelech is technically the king Moshiach, right? Then Moshiach ben David, you, you can save yourself. You can be your own David Amelech, right? Every person in the Tanakh, represents things in us that we can awaken. So we have to awaken the David Amelech in us. That's what accelerate Moshiach and start singing our songs. Um, and, and we learn from him. That's, that's why they are so powerful. So guys, I hope you're all gonna sing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a song and-, and um, Definitely. That that's 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 the goal. That's the goal. Uh, uh, you you all have to make songs and and sing uh, hallelujah. You know that it, we have to understand. I I can't wait for the day where you know the the gospel singing in the, in the black church is, is is you know is gonna look like nothing to our songs in our synagogue. I mean we have Kalbach and we have uh, you know this this you know, is where I have a real problem with the women not being able to sing right but yes technically it's a problem when it's only one woman singing alone so it was uh, right it's, i it's, thought that was only chabad no 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 it's it, that's the halacha it's it's oh. it's just where we became more machmir because men became animals uh, but uh, i'm working on them it, it's it, it's taking time <laughs> But technically, <laughs> you're so cute, Ravi. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. <laughs> it's, it's true that you know it's when you when you work with couples and one after the other, and 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 you always have to drag the guy. It's just like it's it's 
the women all want to be good and the guys are just like uh, i don't know they, I don't know, uh, that, that, that's, uh, that's, that's why I gave up on the men. Uh, no, no, not completely, chas I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a man after all. But I didn't give up on myself, so that's why I'm not going to give up on them. But Listen, not all men are animals, but I right, like that right. it's in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, don't quote me. But, but it's, it's um, you know, it's, it's the biggest challenge. It started in Gan Eden and we have to finish, we have to finish him. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way we have to finish him in a good way and um and wait uh, i have a question if you're is it like really group singing or can you have a loophole and like have backup singers but uh, backup singers like like uh, like uh, like how we because i sing right I like oh yeah, yeah i like to sing and i don't want to have if i ever want to pursue it more i don't want that restriction <laughs> Right. Well, first of all, you you don't you you're not responsible. And and, and if it's if it's like a sexy thing, singing, and that's what I heard about, like that the hair and the voice is like attractive. But it's the same on men. They think like girls love a guy who has a guitar or sings nice, or Justin Bieber. You know, like <laughs> Bieber. Right. <laughs> so like I don't know. It's I don't feel like it's fair, especially if women are on a, are on a higher level. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. So it, it's it's. It's, be, it's to tell you the power of the woman. That the woman, why, why do you think that we have sirens, female sirens, you know, like, uh, no, not sirens, uh, 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 mermaids, you know? The mermaids, yes. Yeah, yeah. But the sirens, biggest thing is that very you good. Say right. right, right. That you know it's sirens. Also. But whatever. No, in you French, we, you... we say sirens. <laughs> oh, well, it is, sirens are what they in are. In Spanish, it's, it's, it's sirens. Oh, in Spanish. Right. Right. Wait, I have a question. Wait, what are you trying to say? Mermaids are real? Uh, well, according, no, to, the... according to the Gemara, yes. No, seriously? Was... Yeah, according to the Talmud, they are real, yes. You should have a totally separate yeah. class on mermaids. I bet the whole thing would fill up like crazy. So like the little mermaid is true? Well, <laughs> I, 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 not that one. I don't think they're so cute like her. But... And, uh, but yes, the, the, the concept the concept comes from the Jews. You have to say most of the concept that you're gonna see in the in in the Marvel movie, in the X Men, in the science fiction thing, is all comes from from the Jewish uh, traditions. All those things. You'll be surprised where you found dragons and all that. No, I'm not saying dragons are real, but I'm saying it comes from the Jewish uh, sources. All that stuff. Um, but yes, yeah, fascinating. None of the the woman's power. It's it's. It's where it says Kolisha. I don't say the words of the woman. It says the sound of her voice because since the voice, the sound of the voice itself connects directly from, to, from the soul of the person. So he, the person who listens to that voice um, is affected in a much more intense way, right? That's why it says you should not listen to music of evil people. <laughs> even, so, even they say good words, but if it's evil people, their neshama is going to transfer through, right? The, the sound is frequencies and vibration is going to go through you and is going to affect the atoms in you, in the, the soul, which is vibration. Wow. And so it's energy. Yeah, it's all energy. And like and, the sirens, like the sirens. Yeah, exactly. Why, why, why do they have <laughs> those, those mermaids who... And the and the men they feel they 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 trap because they trap because it's it's an energy. It's a guy like like as if he's falling in love. He, he's he's completely um, affected by it. So we we are we're we're meant to be careful of what we hear. Technically, there's no problem with Goisha music. The only problem with Goisha music he wants the whoever the soul of the person singing. If it's a negative soul, even if it's a nice song, it will affect you negatively. If the if the soul is pure then it's good it's why you, people listen to classic and or to very inspiring music um but yeah the, that that's the power of the singing so that's why we're we're more careful uh, because we know if a man falls in the trap of of a evil woman he, even if he's a good guy he's gonna he's not gonna make it and if it's a good woman if it's a bad guy he's gonna he's gonna make it so that that's the power of the woman we, we know it <laughs> she's she's super powerful um and 
and even when, and especially when she, she sings, right? <laughs> so that, that's the power. But the, overall, first of all, you're not responsible for who listens to you. Um, you so you, after we have to discuss if it's, uh, you know, uh, on concerts or public singing, but uh, if it's, uh, I'm just speaking in terms of recording and doing things like that, there's no, there's a, not, a lot of Jewish women today who actually uh, do it. Um, but but um, after that after that we'll see we'll, 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 we can discuss it on a, uh, on a deeper level one on one um, but yeah it's 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 a very uh, there's nothing more powerful than music it's we, we are music we are we we live in a world of string theory right so everything is vibration our entire body is a vibrating being and everything that we experience is energy and vibration that's why today people are so depressed everybody listens to music because they need to feel they're vibrating and so we are we are constantly trying to be alive feel alive so but the problem is that the music and the vibration that are sent you know, I don't know if you heard about all those conspiracies of 400, 472 uh, megahertz. Well, that's the good ones, actually. But the, 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 the hertz, the frequency of, of sound has been changed to affect us in a negative way. And then don't go above a certain number or I forgot the exact number. And because of that, it, it kind of traps the people to stay in a certain mood, to stay trapped with a certain frequency. We are supposed to be on a higher frequency where more, we're much more happy, much more loving, much more energetic. And um, it's connected to the energy of love and the energy of... <laughs> so all the music today is crap. I mean, 90% is, is angry music, it's screaming music, it's, it's, it's death music, it's very few little, beautiful exciting loving and chanting spiritual music you should, you should check out check out my song on spotify man. all right well it's, it's gonna inspire all of us all right <laughs> but you, you were right by the way about about the fact that um in the kiruv movement um i know because i was doing kiruv and we had at my table men and women were all singing um and um so some say in your own home, there's no problem, first of all, it's the boys and girls. Uh, if it's in the context of something holy, if it's not in the context of, you know, like a concert getting wild, but it's like in, in, you're singing for the purpose of holiness and the people where there are there to connect spiritually already, it's a different level. So according to some uh, uh, opinions, the, the PSAC are, that uh, women can sing on uh, on Shabbos. There's no problem for men to listen to women sing on Shabbos. Obviously, the majority don't hold like that. They are machmir. They don't hold to that to that heter. But um, it is it is an existing uh, uh, plaque. Well, that makes a lot of sense because I remember being a Shabbat table. Like I wasn't allowed to really sing, <clears throat> and I love singing. So for me to like hear all the Shabbos songs and not be able to participate, it's very like. Right. It's a little bit degrading also. Yes. yes. And then yes. when I went to a Chabad place, they they let everybody sing and they said it's okay together. And I just felt like it's much more, it feels more connected and it's right. in no way like provocative. So. Exactly. Exactly. You you got it. You got it. I, I just, um, this is this is something that I am learning um, from my Rabbanit. In the, actually, she is, telling us um, to sing on Shabbos, right before Shabbos and after we light the, the candles, going outside, face to the moon and sing. The, there are some uh, songs that we have to say uh, before and after uh, lighting the candles. But I don't know if this is just that we have to do it. I should do ask her. <laughs> I think personally it, alone I think it's, it's a personal thing i mean home home is no problem anyway but yeah i think it's it's a personal thing where you 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 just lit up your soul at that moment and you allow it to you know become to, to express become, be, become the moon right to become become the moon, the moon. To, this is to, the to do our energy yeah. to elevate the the energy of shabbos yes in in, in silence 
yes, yes, absolutely. And actually, um, I have a, a quote about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite quotes um, is here. The, 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 the Rabbi Nachman of Breslov says like that. Tears open the gates of heaven, but songs breaks down its walls. Now, wow. Okay, which I found very powerful because we say, oh yeah, you should pray with tears and you know cry. Okay, very nice. But songs breaks down its wall. There's no gates anymore. You're just straight in. And that's, we, we're, we are in a such uh, an, an exile mentality where we're going to try to reach Hashem with pain and repentance and suffering and crying. No, we're breaking all that. Now is dancing, it's music, is excitement, is joy, is is jumping and and reach God that way. And that what we know Rabbi Nachman of Breslov changed his approach. He he said if I knew I, I would not have make myself suffer so much. If I knew the power of joy and the power of singing and the power of eating with holiness, I would not have fasted. I would not have cried so much. I would have used the, the happy way. So everybody smiley face. Let's use the happy way. <laughs> so, I still can't get over the fact that mermaids are real. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I'll, it's in the Gemara, I will show you. It's, Rashi says uh, men have slept with dolphins and made mermaids. Well, there's a book on, um, on all that those is, uh, uh, animals, like also the unicorn, right? They have the, the animal oh with the Oh, right, 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 right. Yes, yeah, yes. So there's, I saw there was a whole book on it, but when I mentioned the dolphin thing, the whole time it says, Rashi says, but he could just mean the dolphins um birth because because they they give birth the same way humans do right no, only... we, we, we know it's possible to have sex with a dolphin no, that uh, right actually but the... it's true it's true dolphins are very aggressive the males are able to it is well known that when males uh dolphins uh rape humans all right yeah, they're it's... very very aggressive the it's, ma can... male against male again i'm telling you it's I everywhere. did a whole project on dolphins. They're the most happiest animals ever. Yeah, it's my favorite animal. <laughs> dolphin, I, 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 I That's my I, favorite animal. I, I so the fe females, females are okay. Actually, in the aquariums, more are females. Right. But the males rape the females uh, dolphins. Dolphin. Yeah, yeah. And they sure. can they they rape uh, swimmers who are uh, in, in near them. So they are extremely I, dangerous. I don't know in my dolphins, they were male or female. They, they both gave me kisses uh, 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 when I swim with them. You should, it's, it's really cool. I, lo I love dolphins. I want, to, I, want, I want to have an aquarium and, 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 and one big bathtub where I can go, go and have my own dolphin in my bathtub. That is the best. There's a, there's a prompt on the Hinge dating app that says, like, I'll know I've made it when. And I wrote when I have a saltwater pool with two dolphins in my backyard. <laughs> <That's so funny>. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. But it says Rashi could have been saying that they gave that they gave birth like with human or whatever they're saying is just that they give birth like humans, not necessarily. But they could have sex with a human. I think there was a woman that did it. It, 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 yeah. The, the, a woman Gimmar, had the Gimmar, sexual experience with dolphin as part of NASA study. Yeah, that's not allowed though. The Gemara, you have to know the Gemara. Rashi says mermaid. Reality. Rashi says mermaids. So right. it, we're we're talking. It's Rashi is is pshat. Rashi says the pshat. So it's not. Uh, but it's uh, it's more like just like a fish that has some human characteristics. Right. No, features, yeah, yeah. Right? It's not the mer little Probably mermaid. Probably an ugly looking like. It's not a little mermaid. That's a right. figure. <laughs> no. I don't think any man is gonna feel like uh, seduced by those. <laughs> I think they came up with a good like the, if you Google like after the tsunami that a mermaid washed ashore, they show like this mermaid that washed up, and that's more what I would. Right. 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 Yeah. Kind of all right everyone thank you for changing the world with uh, me tonight and uh, bring more light to uh, to the world to, to our souls and uh, we shall continue to change the world next week with more fascinating uh, truth about Judaism. it is it is what numbers it's did you guys i'm so sorry uh, what we, numbers we, did you guys get up to we reached number 60 okay
So, so we, we we technically we have seven. I go till 70, 70, 71. So we're almost done. <laughs> How do I get the previously oh, recorded ones? They, they they are all on YouTube. Uh, I have the I'll, I'll send you the the link. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Miriam, are you on the group? Is she on our WhatsApp group? I just joined. Yeah. You just joined. The new yeah, lucky to have you. Yes. Thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs> and uh, um, yes, yeah, so I wish everybody a wonderful, beautiful Shabbos. Don't forget to sing and uh, to break the walls of heaven with your songs. Amen. Amen. Shalom, everybody. Thank Shabbat you so much. Shalom. Thank you. Bye. Bye.